Welcome to another style study video. I am Matt and in this session we are looking at style 4C Hellesbach. But before we begin, let me give my usual disclaimer and a little bit of a quick explanation. First, the disclaimer, the usual one that I do not represent the BJCP in any way, shape or form. The BJCP does not authorize nor endorse this video or this series of videos. This entire series is me documenting the process of learning each style of beer in the guidelines working towards my BJCP certification. So, the change of scenery, which you've probably noticed, I am recording this in the midst of the COVID-19 shelter in place, the quarantine, however you refer to it. And right now my wife is in the usual area that I would do my tastings, uh, Zooming, I was gonna say Skyping, but I believe it's Zooming with her friends. And so I brought the beer into the Orlando Neozaz studio, where we do most, if not all of our podcasts in Neozaz. And believe me, it's not the first time beer has been sampled in here, and certainly nowhere near going to be the last. So, let's talk about Style 4C Hellesbach. So first, let's look at the overall impression, and it reads, A relatively pale, strong, multi-German lager beer with a nicely attenuated finish that enhances drinkability. The hop character is generally more apparent than in other box. Moving on to the vital statistics of the style... We start off with an SRM range of 6 to 11. The IBUs range from 23 to 35. The original gravity goes from 1.064 to 1.072. Final gravity, 1.011 to 1.018, giving us the ABV range of 6.3 to 7.4%. Now, looking at the characteristics we're going to be reviewing in the completed score sheet, which I do have here with me. It's not completed. It's empty. You, you probably know how this works. It's been a while for me, if you can't tell. I have to remind myself what's going on here. So, aroma. Moderate to strong, grainy, sweet malt aroma, often with a light toasted quality and low milliard products. Moderately low to no hop aroma, often with a spicy herbal or floral quality. Clean fermentation profile. Fruity esters should be low to none. Very light al alcohol may be noticeable. May have light DMS aroma. Going on to appearance. Deep gold to light amber in color. Bright to clear clarity. Large, creamy, persistent white head. Moving on to flavor. Moderate to moderately strong, sweet, grainy malt flavor dominates with some toasty notes and or mayored products providing added interest. Little to no caramel flavors, may have light DMS flavor, moderate to no hot flavor, spicy herbal floral peppery, moderate hot bitterness, more so in the balance than in the other box. Clean fermentation profile, well attenuated, not cloying, with a moderately dry finish that may taste both of mop and hops. Malt and hops. I think I said mop. That's a pretty good one. Okay, mouthfeel, finally, for this portion of the guideline, medium bodied, moderate to moderately high carbonation, smooth and clean with no harsh astringency despite the increased hop bitterness. A light alcohol warming may be present. And of course, there is more to the guidelines which you can find online at bjcp.org. There's the comments, the history, and the characteristic ingredients. The last thing I'm gonna read from here are the commercial examples, and then we'll discuss what I'll be tasting and go over the uh, elements of the score sheet. So commercial examples, Alton Munster Maybach, Anger Maybach, Capital Maybach, Blind Tiger Maybach, Einbecker Meyerbach, and Hacker Sproar. Now, none of those I found locally, but I did find not only a suggestion from the bottle shop I've been using for other videos, but one that actually does kind of say, it says it's a Hell's Doppelbach right on the label. It is a Beta Andigator which I am more than happy to sample because I am a big fan of Abita Brewing. So you can find quite a few of these, the Abita on tap here in Central Florida, and they are featured very heavily at the Universal Studios Mardi Gras event since they are from New Orleans, so it makes perfect sense. So, if you are still new to the show, here is, I have everything you've just seen on the screen in one cheat sheet. And I'm going to go over the initial findings right now. Oh, i got to reach for a glass. Things aren't where they usually are. So I am going to be using a glass glass as opposed to a plastic glass. I don't know why you don't call plastic a plastic. I guess you call it a plastic cup. 
But I'm out of plastic cups, and that is not a necessity that I need to leave the house for and bother people who are trying to help everyone they can as essential workers at a grocery store for some plastic cups for a YouTube video. I can wash my own glasses in this cut in this situation. So let's check for the hiss, which of course there's a good one there. And let's take the initial pour and go through this sheet quick. I'm not quite going to do what I call the competition pour because I want to get back into this. It's been a little while for me. Actually, let's put the beer here where you might be able to see it. Can't quite see where the camera is, but all right. Aroma. So we're looking for moderate to strong hop, moderately low to no hop and clean fermentation. Which I immediately get the sweet malt aroma followed by it's definitely a beer yeast aroma without it being a... Uh, just a straight up yeast, which I'm um, not quite sure if I'm describing what, I, what I'm trying to describe there, but it's, uh, I would say the clean fermentation is good. The, well, I haven't even, I forgot there's moderate to low to no hops. There is no hop aroma in this, and it's all, it's all that malt and the, uh, that bit of the fermentation, or the yeast character from, from the fermentation. So let's look at appearance, deep gold to light amber. Let's say we got a deep gold, bright to clear, definitely bright. Almost clear. It's the condensation is, is happening pretty quick in here. This 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 room gets warm really quick, but it is it is fairly almost clear though. I think even on initial pour before the condensation, it wasn't quite described as clear, but bright is definitely good. Creamy, persistent white head. Head is fairly persistent. It was certainly creamy when I poured it. I'll take a closer look at that as we go into the score sheet. Flavor, moderate to moderately strong malt, little to no caramel, moderate to no hot flavor, moderate hot bitterness, clean fermentation. Let's see what I get on a couple sips here. It is definitely, it has got the malt flavor. It's it's actually a little uh, sweeter than I expected, or maybe that's just my initial taste. I'll explore that a little more as I fill out the sheet. No hot flavor at all, no uh, that hop characteristic. Um, as far as bitterness goes, bitterness, I should say, let's see. Might be there. I'm going to hold it a little bit longer. And when I have more time as we pause the recording, let's see if I can draw that out. Um, yeah, I'll get on to the more, more of the details in the sheet. Mouthfeel, medium body, moderate to a moderately high carbonation, smooth and clean. Uh, might be a little light for a medium body. Again, more taste will tell, but everything else. I'd say so. The carbonation is still see just rolling off the glass. At least I can. I don't know if it's coming up in camera. And smooth and clean. That's I would say that is accurate. So now is the time where I pause the camera and really dive deep into this and fill out the entire score sheet, which I almost held upside down. And I'll be back to review what I wrote. Okay, I've completed the sheet and uh, it might have gone a little better than I expected. I expected after all this time to maybe struggle a little bit, which which I did. Uh, maybe I expected to struggle more than I did. Um, I think it's a decent return. Should only get better from here, I hope. So, all right, let's get into it. That's, that's what you really want to know. So, all the usual top information. Category four, subcategory C, entry number. I put Andy Gator, the actual beer that I was drinking. Subcategory, Hellas Bach. And bottle inspection, I checked off appropriate size, cap, fill level, label removal, etc. My comments were branded cap, good hiss on open. Now I will show you, if you can see, that's this area here is much lighter than this. That's because I realized writing on this sound dampening fabric I have on everything in here was a little difficult. So I flipped over to the back of my iPad and wrote on the back of that. And you can actually read what I wrote. So if you do check out this scan on the website, that part should be readable. So, okay, let's get into the nitty gritty here. Aroma. I said, sweet malt aroma dominates. A touch of burnt sugar to rich caramel notes. A light touch of lemon zest found on the sample while swirled. A clean, light yeast characteristic all through, or I'm, I'm sorry, under all the mentioned aromas. And I gave that a 9 out of 12. Appearance. Rich gold in color, bright, coming close to clear, medium-sized head with tiny tight bubbles that held a thick collar ring inside the glass the entire tasting. And that was a three out of three. 
Flavor, strong, sweet, malt persisting through the tongue, palate, and the finish. Just the slightest touch of bitterness when holding the sample over my tongue. A noticeable but not overwhelming sugar sweetness. Very clean fermentation, just a hint of alcohol found. And that was a 15 out of 20. And I did want to mention the sugar sweetness. I sat there and struggled to find the words I was looking for, and then it dawned on me it was really that simple. It tasted like straight up sugar, like a little sugar was added in there. So sometimes, even though I look for good descriptors that paint the best picture possible, sometimes this, the answer is as simple as it tastes like sugar because that's, in the end, what I realized I was tasting. So I guess that's my takeaway out of this one. Uh, mouthfeel, light creaminess on the tongue that follows through to the finish. Thinner body than expected for style. No harsh astringency at all. A very faint alcohol warmth noticed. And I gave that a 3 out of 5. And then finally on overall impression. Overall, a well-made beer was noticeably sweet for style. May have been slightly under-attenuated, but fermentation was very clean. A strong hop bitterness or, or larger early addition hop would have rounded out the aroma, flavor, and mouthfeel nicely. They gave that a 7 out of 10, giving the entire beer a 37 out of 50. Let's put it at the very good range, at the very top of the very good range. That range is 30 to 37, so there's only one point away from the excellent range, which is usually right for the commercial examples. And then the little box underneath, I did give it a middle of the road for classic example to not the style, because I did find it too sweet and not quite bitter enough. Flawless, I did give it kind of the, the fourth checkmark position because I didn't really find any flaws except maybe under attenuation, but that might be, that's me guessing it's under attenuated, not knowing what ingredients are in there. So I give it the benefit of the, of the doubt. And under wonderful to lifeless, I went down the middle because it wasn't the best, but it was not bad. And I'm certainly going to finish this sample effect. Maybe I'll do it now for the return and for everyone hanging in there during what we're going through right now. All right. Well, on that note, that is it. Other than let me say, uh, check out our home site, which is something I usually don't promote, neozaz.com. That is where all the recording we do and all our podcasts. We've got a ton of shows, mostly dealing with pop culture. If you have an interest in something pop culture, we probably have a show on it, not a show, at least a special. We do have an ongoing beer show, which I will be kicking into high gear during this quarantine because I'll be brewing a lot. And there's just a lot of stuff there. We've been doing this for 10 years. If you're new to these, this set of videos and new to Neo's as, and you're looking for something to do during all this, whether you like it or hate it, it's something to distract you for many, 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 many hours. So check that out, neozaz.com. Big Monster Brewing, Big Big Monster Brewing, I should get that right, bigmonsterbrewing.com is underway. I have time to work on that as well, and that will have the links to the rest of these videos as well as the scans for these score sheets and some other information, recipes, other videos I've done, blog posts and whatnot. That is a work in progress, but will probably become sooner, be coming out sooner than later. I, guess I should actually write notes for this to figure out what I'm going to say, but I think you get the gist. And finally, please like, and subscribe actually please at, at the least subscribe to this trying to get more subscribers to this video trying to get the channel up to the qualifications it needs for live videos to do live brew days and more things on youtube and i need to get those extra subscribe not even extra just to get that subscription number up to qualify so if you're watching this you've got a, even a little bit of information out of this maybe even laughing at me and that's good enough i don't mind being laughed at please subscribe as a return in that that's all i ask so with that, I will, of course, have to say thank you for listening, and I'll be back starting a new style with Style 5, which I believe is Pale Bitter European Beers. It's some combination of those. Another style I absolutely love, so I'll be looking forward to not only tasting, but talking about that in the next video. So until then, I will see you in that next style study video.